Oh, I do say, it's a lovely day today, isn't it, Mr. 7805? Oh, what a funny joke you said to Mr. Nano over here. We all know that Nano has a small appetite. <laughs> Speaking of appetite, if anyone gets hungry, I have some spare chips around if anyone gets a bit peckish. Would you like more tea, Mr. Uh, Raspberry Pi? Absolutely, I can give you just a little bit more there. There we go, very pleasant, isn't it? I must say, mmm, very, very nice. What's that? You also want some more tea, Mr. XC9536XL CPLD? No problem, I'll just grab some tea bags. Unfortunately, components, I'm going to have to end the tea party. I've unfortunately run out of tea bags. If this is a problem that you tend to find as an Englishman, then you want to watch this video because in this episode of the Gen Maker, we're going to be building the Intelli Tea System, which is an intelligent tea bag holder that lets you know when you're running out of tea bags, so this doesn't happen to you. That or the madness. Stick around. So, for this project, you will need a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, an Arduino Uno, a HX711 ADC for load sensors. You'll also need a weight sensor. This one is for five kilograms, but three to five should be sufficient. A reed switch, a small yet powerful magnet. I've got several here in a little pack. A 10 kilo ohm resistor, a speaker and other support cables for your speaker and the USB-B cable for powering the Arduino and connecting it to the Raspberry Pi. And you'll also need a cable for powering the Raspberry Pi. For the mechanical side of the project, you're gonna to want to find a nice tin to hold your tea bags. And in this case, I've got my one from a shop. And as you can see, quite clearly has English breakfast tea on the side. We all know that DigiKey doesn't make tea bags, but if they did, they'd be the best. All the parts are available from DigiKey, link in the description below. So on your load sensor, you need to identify which side is the measuring side. Now in this case, you'll find that your load sensor has an arrow on the front of it alongside with a number. Now the number obviously is the weight capacity, so this is a five kilogram one. And the arrow tells you which direction you should put your uh, weighing platform on. Now in this case, it's pointing that way. So my weighing platform should sit this way. So when it pushes downwards, it goes down with the arrow and can make the measurement. However, you want to make sure that your platform doesn't touch the other side because then it would be put in way here and then it wouldn't be able to measure that weight. So I've cut some very thin strips of copper clad and I'm going to glue those to the top of the load sensor and then glue the platform on top of the piece of copper clad. And that should stop it from touching the load sensor or at least, at least touching, stop it from touching this side of the sensor. You also want to make sure that your load center doesn't sit flush with the ground because again, the pressure will be going through the wood instead of the cutout points, which is what actually allows you to measure the weight or the load on this part of the sensor. So we're also going to use a piece of copper clad onto the bottom of the sensor so that when the sensor sits on the wood, there is a gap underneath that allows the load sensor to detect the weight of the platform. So here we have the IntelliT scheme schematic and you can tell it's quite simple. We have the Raspberry Pi here connected to the Arduino Uno using a USB connection. We have a speaker connected to the Raspberry Pi and then we also have an HX711 sensor connected to the weight sensor. And then down here we have a reed switch that connects to D4 and uses a pull down resistor so that when nothing is connected D4 is pulled down to ground and then when the reed switch is closed which represents the lid being closed D4 is then connected to 5 volts. The Arduino code is very simple and takes advantage of the Q2HX711 library. And that handles all the raw data from the HX711 sensor. In our setup code, we open up the serial port, we configure the pin modes, and then we calibrate the sensor. In our calibrate code, all we do is take a bunch of readings and see what the range of those readings are. And then we can use that as a form of hysteresis so that we can ignore results that vary by a certain amount. Our get reading function again is very simple. We take 10 readings and then sum them up to give us an average so that we can get rid of the fluctuations that come from the sensor. And then in the main loop of code, all we do is look to see if the lid has been opened. And then when it is opened, we perform some basic maths and then submit the number of estimated bags to the Raspberry Pi. 
Now the Raspberry Pi code is very simple and takes advantage of Pi Game, which is a library that allows us to play some sounds. Now the main loop of code is very, very simple. All we do is keep running a loop that looks for some data on the serial port, and depending on that data, we either print out some results or we play some T-Facts. So now that we've completed the IntelliT system, let's see how it's put together. Now the first thing that you'll notice is we've got the Raspberry Pi computer system. This produces the responses to depending on how many bags are remaining in the pot. And this is also connected up to a speaker which is hidden behind the pot. We then have the Arduino Uno which is connected to the Raspberry Pi using a USB lead. This acts as both power and a communication link for the Arduino Uno and the Raspberry Pi. Now the Arduino Uno reads two different things. It reads a small read switch on the back of the lid of the tea bag pot, but it also reads data from the load sensor analog to digital converter, the HX711. Now under this wooden pressure plate is the load sensor and that is used to measure the number of bags inside the pot, but it will only be an estimate because it's weight, not quantity. Now, when this system boots up, the first thing it does is it takes a series of readings and then averages them out from the load sensor so we can get an idea of how much variance there is in the output and use that in a form of hysteresis so that we can ignore results that, you know, sort of oscillate between two values. Once it's taken those average readings, then it will zero out the result such that when nothing's in there, you should get zero coming out of the Arduino. So with everything set up and ready to go, let's test it out. So let's grab ourselves a whole bunch of tea bags and open the system up. Now, when the lid opens up, the read switch is deactivated. And when that happens, the system gets ready to take some readings. So we're going to go ahead and shove a whole bunch of these in there. Like so. Then we're going to go and close this lid up. Now, that should be not enough tea bags. So we should get a response saying something like, you haven't got enough tea bags. So we close this up, give it a few seconds. By Jove, it appears you're running out of tea bags. Get some more. And there you go. That's the response from the system. So let's keep adding some more stuff and see what happens next. Let's just get it all in there. I need some more tea bags. Go on. Let's get some random facts from teas. No, let's get some tea random facts, whatever you want to call it. When making a pot of tea, pour hot water into the teapot to warm it before you make your tea. There you go. Put warm water into your teapot before you use your teapot. Let's see what other facts we get from this. Open it up. Did you know, traditionally, milk was poured into a cup before the tea oh. to protect the delicate china? That is no longer necessary. Interesting. From now on, I shall put milk in first, despite the fact that it's unnecessary. Let's go for one more fact. Did you know, for centuries, tea was used only as medicine? It took almost 3,000 years for it to become an everyday drink. Blimey, 3,000 years. Well, you learn something every day about tea. Well, that's all we have time for today in this episode of The Gentleman Maker. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and hopefully you learned a few things about tea.